This is one of the very frustrating moments in my life. You have a long planned trip and you travel about a quarter of the way around the world to visit somewhere, to pay your respects, and then when you arrive, you find you can't, in this case because of the coronavirus shutdown. It was two months ago that I was last here, in March uh, 2020, and at the start of the coronavirus lockdown. And I was very frustrated because I was unable to get in here. But hey, things change, they move on. The lockdown has been eased and this place has been opened. So where am I? I'm at the site of one of the great atrocities committed during the Second World War. And I'd like to pay my respects in my own humble way to those poor creatures who suffered as a result of the atrocities. And also in particular for any viewers from the UK. This incident, although it involved hundreds of UK troops, is largely unknown in Britain. I'd just like to draw attention to it. I'm sitting inside the Santa Can Memorial Park, which is on the site of the World War II prisoner war camp. And for those of you who don't know the story, in late 1942 and early 1943, uh, just over 2,400 prisoners of war were brought here. And these were troops who had been captured after the fall of Singapore. They were about 75% Australia and 25% British. And over the following three years, they basically all perished at the hands of the Japanese. Only six survived and they had all managed to escape. And so all of the remaining men who were in the hands of the Japanese perished at their hands. And this is one of the great atrocities in modern warfare. Now the prisoners were brought here to construct a military airfield for the Japanese, working as forced labor. The working conditions were terrible, I guess pretty similar to those on the much better known Death Railway, which was constructed by POWs in Thailand and Burma at about the same time. The prisoners had very little to work with apart from their bare hands and rudimentary tools, and in spite of this, and all of their best efforts to delay the construction by performing little acts of sabotage and so forth, the airfield was duly constructed in 1943 and was ready by the end of the year. At that point, as far as Japanese were concerned, they were surplus to requirements and were just an embarrassment. So things got much worse in 1944. Food rations were cut to starvation levels, an instance of mistreatment and atrocities grew, and hence the number of fatalities started to increase. Now by the end of 1944, it was quite clear that the Allies were winning the war and they were advancing on all fronts. And in fact, there was a window of opportunity for the Allies to liberate the POWs at that time. But unfortunately, the POWs were very badly let down by the political masters and the military high command who simply abandoned them to their fate. I've covered this in another video. Now the last thing that the Japanese wanted to happen was that the POW should be liberated and so they hatched a plan to start moving them towards the west of the island marching through the interior and this was where the infamous Ranau death marches started. There were three marches which took place in the first half of 1945 marching through absolutely terrible terrain and conditions and of course most of the prisoners were terribly debilitated and were simply not up to the journey and many of them died en route. Of the approximately 1,000 who took part in the marches um, there were six survivors who escaped. The remaining 1,400 remained here in this camp here and every last man died. Now when I talk about the deaths of the POWs, how did they actually die? Well firstly there was what we might euphemistically call natural causes. And this included such things as malnutrition, 
they were on starvation rations, mistreatment, and of course tropical diseases, malaria, beriberi, tropical ulcers. The Japanese, of course, had uh, ample medical supplies, but they kept them for themselves and never distributed them to the POWs. And apart from that, some of them just lost the will to live. Their spirit got broken and they just lay down and died. And finally, we come to the killings. The more routine killings included shootings, bayonetings, prisoners who were beaten to death with rifle butts by the guards, you name it. On the marches, any prisoner who couldn't keep up and got left behind was disposed of by the guards. And then there were the more unusual sorts of deaths. A number of prisoners were tortured to death by the Kempitai, who were the, um, the equivalent to the Nazi Gestapo. And the Kempitai dreamt up ever more uh, diabolical ways of torturing and killing prisoners. It just doesn't bear thinking about. And there were other notable examples. One prisoner was actually crucified and this provided the inspiration for the famous scene in the Neville Shoot novel A Town Like Alice. It absolutely is beyond my comprehension how human beings can treat each other like this. And the saddest thing is that until this day the Japanese haven't accepted culpability for it. It's simply been airbrushed out, out of the history books. School children aren't talk about, taught about the Second World War era at all. And for many of the older Japanese, as far as they're concerned, these were legitimate acts in what they considered to be a just war.